Tanzania is uniquely rich in wildlife and natural resources, making it one of the most biodiverse countries in Africa. Over 28% of the country is directly protected through national parks, game reserves, forest reserves and other conservation areas. However, these protected areas are often not sufficient in size to accommodate wildlife migration patterns which often run outside the protected zones, causing conflict with the growing rural populations who have settled there. Tanzania's population has quadrupled in the last 50 years, whereas in the past, local consumption of natural resources could be sustained easily. Now we're seeing kind of the end game. If people really were to continue their traditional patterns of consumption, all of this natural resource would be lost through deforestation and extinction of the large mammals. A bold new approach in community-based conservation was created in Tanzania to address these challenges. Wildlife management areas have emerged as the best hope to stem the growing tide of wildlife decline due to pressures from human settlement, poaching and land degradation. <laughs> Lakini yote hiyo tumefanya hakuna faida yote tulopata. Na tumepiga sana wanyama kutumia bunduki aina ya rifle. Hizi bunduki kubwa zaidi ndo tumetumia. Lakini hamna faida yote tulopata. Kilu kiwinda kilu kifanya. Hamna chochote tunachokipata. Previously, the creation of conservation areas often involved displacing communities from an area in order to protect the endemic species living there. As Tanzania's population grows, the need for addressing appropriate land use needs for both humans and wildlife becomes more acute. Starting from the German era and the British and the early independence days, uh, wildlife was being managed by the government and was what we call the fence and the gun, where the community were put on one side and the uh, government were putting wildlife on, on the other side. And as a result, there was no sense of ownership between the community and uh, the government. Wildlife was seen as a public property which belonged to the government. And uh, as a result, the community was seen as uh, always, whenever they want access to wildlife, were seen as poachers or people were stealing. And uh, that way created more tension and uh, a cause for conservation. Realizing that, government came with a new strategy of actually uh, empowering the communities. And this was to make the communities, men the wildlife, in the areas where they live with them. And uh, to do that, they have to benefit from it. So the whole approach, the new, what I may call a shift in paradigm, was to actually have the communities have access to their resources and be a part in its management. In 1998, the U.S. Agency for International Development joined with the government of Tanzania, other donors and conservation NGOs to support an innovative partnership in wildlife management and rural development. Decentralizing control of critical wildlife habitat within village lands away from the national government and into the hands of those communities. The program involved the creation of a series of community wildlife management areas outside national parks, game reserves and game controlled areas to be set on village lands known as wildlife management areas or WMAs. The WMAs are located in areas that have a high amount of wildlife still in these rural areas and the challenge going forward is that people have traditionally viewed these as their own natural resources. And anything that tries to protect 
those resources come into the short-term demands of the local people. The previous um, um, approach to manage conservation was not effective enough and was not providing sufficient benefits to local communities. If WMOs had not been created, the wildlife resources would have been de destroyed a lot because the WMA provide additional conservation area, additional protecting area for the wildlife resources close to the uh, protected areas because most of these animals migrate into community land. So a lot of damage would have happened if WMAs were not created. Mwanzoni nilikuwa ni kwamba mwenye majukumu makubwa ya kulinda rasilimali za wanyamapori kwa ni mkurugenzi wa idara ya wanyamapori kwa kwa kushirikisha wataalamu wake. Lakini sasa hivi majukumu hayo wameyagawa kutoka kule ngazi za juu yani kutoka kwa mkurugenzi wa idara ya wanyamapori ndio maana tukaanzisha hizi wildlife management area hifadhi za jamii ili na hawa wanashiriki wana, wana moja kwa moja katika kusimamia sheria kuhifadhi wanyamapori Aside from the ecosystem benefits like improved forest health and stable watersheds tourism revenue is now an important source of income for these areas the WMA has the authority to enter into agreements with tourism investors, and the revenue generated is then divided among participating villages to fund operations such as anti-poaching and management programs and other community projects. Sisi kwa na kijiji wa kijiji hiki tulikuwa walio wengi tuna tumia kuwinda kutafuta kitoweo kwa ajili ya kama mboga, lakini baada ya kuanisha WMA tulikuja kujua kwamba ina manufaa kwa sababu tulikuwa hatuwezi kupata pato kutoka kutoka na hao wanyama ila mtu alikuwa anapata kipato cha binafsi lakini sasa kipato kinakuja tunajenga shule na zanati the first wildlife management areas officially began as a pilot program in 2006 today there are currently 14 around Tanzania with an additional 20 WMAs at different stages of development across the country in total, they cover an area of 125,000 square kilometers, a size roughly comparable to the country of Malawi or New York State. Over 350,000 Tanzanians already benefit directly or indirectly from the program. Creating a WMA involves extensive investment of time and resources, and sometimes communities face difficulties in trying to fulfill the prerequisites of forming a statutory WMA. The most important being the completion of a participatory land use planning process and resource zone management plan. Villagers must form and register a representative community-based organization called the Authorized Association, formed by elected village representatives, a chairman and a secretary, to whom the wildlife user rights management is transferred. <laughs> Despite the challenges of WMA development, the model now represents the best option in Tanzania for wildlife conservation and community development outside strict protected areas like parks and game reserves. Hali ilikuwa mbaya kabla kuanzishwa WMA sasa hivi. Kwa sababu ijaribu kuangalia eh wanyama walikuwa na uwawa. Walikuwa na uwawa bila mpangilio lakini WMA ilivyoanzishwa sasa hivi tuna hawa mavijes wanalinda wanajaribu kweli kuwalinda hawa wanyama na pia ma, wanajaribu kulinda mazingira ya masafi kwa sababu kijaribu kuangalia eh, WMA ilivyoanzishwa watu walikuwa wanachukia lakini wanaochukia wano ni wawindaji haramu na wachoma mikaa na ndio maana ndio maana wanaiona WMA kama ni mbaya kwa sababu baada ya kuanzishwa kwao maeneo hayo yanalindwa ili yawe katika hali ya usalama na usafi Wanyama hao walivyoanza kulindwa tumawapata wageni kama hapo pwani wageni wanakuja kutembea huku na wakiingia huko wanalipa hela na kipato tunachopata hapa tunagawanya tunaisaidia kijiji kama vile tunao shule tunanunua vitabu na madawati na makalamu tunapeleka kule ili watoto waweze kutumia kule shuleni na hata vitabu hivi vya kusoma na pia pale hospitalini pia tunawasaidia Kwa vile vyombo ambavyo viko punguvu pale tunatumia hela hii tunanunua tunapeleka pale na kijiji pia wageni wanapoingia wanapata kipato kutokana na hapa pia One of the most significant impact of the WMA is the climatic change mitigation uh, the WMA is when they were set aside uh, they reserve grass grass which is needed by the cattle when we had a drought like 2 years back 
most of the pastoralists took their cattle like to Lake Brunge WMA and there they managed to survive. So therefore, this is a very good impact which WMA can contribute to communities. Aided by a very high concentration of wildlife, its proximity to the world-famous Serengeti and benevolent American investor in the adjacent Grumeti Game Reserve, Icona WMA shows the economic viability of the WMA concept. Over a four-year period, Icona received over 3 billion Tanzanian shillings, the equivalent of 2 million US dollars in revenue, more than some national parks. We uh, thankfully enjoy a very robust relationship with uh, the authorities um, and in that regard we are uh, respected and trusted and we want to extend that same relationship on, on the reverse of the coin. Although a lot has already been achieved, WMAs face several challenges and there is still room for improvement in the process. <laughs> vijiji ni vingi kwa mfano WMA yetu ina vijiji tisa. kwa hiyo sasa wakati wa kugawana yale mapato kutakuwa kuna mvutano kuna mwingine anataka kupata za, e, mingi zaidi hasa ukijaribu kuangalia kwamba labda maeneo ambayo labda yana tunayapata ile ile yako ndani ya vijiji kwa hiyo kuna vijiji vingine labda mfano kuna hoteli ya kibo lakini iko kwenye kijiji kimoja kwa hiyo unakuta kwamba wale wenye ile kijiji wanataka kungangania kwamba yale mapato wayapate wao badala ya kugawanya kwenye vijiji vingine. Changamoto tunazokumbana nazo ni ongezeko la watu na watu wanaongezeka sana kwenye hivi vijiji wanachama na wanaonekana sasa kusogea mpaka hadi kukaribia haya maeneo ya uhifadhi wa hizi jumuiya za jamii shirikishi. Swala au changamoto nyingine tunayoiona ni ufadhili au uendeshaji wa hizi WMA unategemea zaidi wahisani badala ya kuitegemea kujitegemea kujitegemea na serikali kuweka mkono wake na hofia kwamba hapo baadaye inaweza kuwa tena ni hatari kwa upande wa hifadhi kwa sababu watu wanaongezeka eneo liko pale pale changamoto ya tatu ni ongezeko la wanyamapori baada ya kwamba mbo mipa inalinda vizuri sasa tena imekuwa tatizo wanyama wale wanatoka na kuja kuvamia mazao kuvamia mifugo na hata imebidi wakati mwingine watu wengine wanaoa na wanyamapori Village Game Scouts are central to fulfilling key objectives of the program. They carry out a range of tasks including anti-poaching patrols, visitor protection duties, fire management, first aid, data collection and monitoring for management purposes. Anti-poaching is the primary role of the Village Game Scouts. In areas like WMAs, with high concentrations of both people and wildlife, poaching remains a serious problem. ni mtego anatumia majangili kamatia wanyama na hii ni tochi wanatumia usiku giza kuwasha kumlika wanyama papo akishaona mnyama anaunganisha honi na na, na hii tochi hii mwanga huu unaambatana na honi mnyama analewa mnyama akishalewa wengine wanakuja kwa panga wanamkata mnyama ameshalewa village game scouts are not always thoroughly equipped and trained occasionally leading to dangerous situations. Ukosevu wa vifaa umefanya kazi yetu kuwa ngumu sana katika eneo hili. Kwa mfano, mimi nakumbuka tukio moja kwamba tulikuwa katika doria na wenzangu tukiwa na gari ndani ya gari letu, ghafla tuliona jangili akiwa na silaha. Na tulianza kuelekea mahali alipokuwa. Katika kuelekea mahali alipokuwa tuka tukao tunamfuatilia kwa karibu. Tulipomsogea jangili yule aliamua kukaa chini na kukaa kulala kwa tumbo baada ya hapo silaha litugeuzia upande wetu tulipokuwa kwa ikawa ni vigumu kumuelekea kwa sababu hali hiyo ilikuwa ni hali hatari na ilikuwa inahatarisha maisha yetu pamoja na chombo ambacho tulikuwa nasafiria kwa hiyo ilibidi tena sisi tujijenge upya kwa kugeuza mwelekeo na kuelekea upande mwingine kwa ajili ya kujihami e, mabadiliko yamekuwepo makubwa sana katangu tumeanza kazi hii kwa sababu tulipokuja tulikuwa tuna ka siku moja mbili tunakuta mnyama ameuawa au tunasikia milio ya risasi lakini kwa sababu tunaweza tukakaa mwezi miezi miwili na tusipate na hilo tumefanikiwa kwa sababu tumekamata sila nyingi kwa kutumia akili tu na mikono yetu In Akona investors help with training village game scouts to better carry out their duty However, not all WMAs have the same resources, and for this reason, the World Wildlife Fund has set in place a framework for WMAs to train and equip their own game scouts appropriately. 
na hayo mafunzo ya awali tulifadhiliwa na watu wa Frankfurt na mafunzo haya ya awali nimeyapata chuo cha taaluma ya wanyamapori pa science mwanza There are also problems relating to the reliance on income from tourism. The global economic downturn, for example, caused a dramatic drop in the tourism sector, which significantly affected the revenue these communities rely on. USAID initiated a cash for work infrastructure project to help mitigate the economic decline in the area through temporary employment, which at the same time will lead to possibilities for increased tourism and improved anti-poaching facilities in the WMAs. The cash for work program was a very important program because we heard from communities themselves that they needed infrastructure to support anti-poaching efforts to grow their tourism investment businesses. So when we had that opportunity to bring that program in, the communities were very excited about it and we worked with them to plan those infrastructure programs. The projects include village game scout outposts, roads, trails, visitor centers, and a variety of other infrastructure needs that the communities identified. Kabla ya kwanza mradi huu kwa kweli uchumi kwa upande wangu ilikuwa kidogo unalegalega lakini baada ya kuja mradi huu nimepata pesa na uchumi wangu umepanda kwa sababu gani nimeongeza kama nimeongeza mifugo kwa sababu mimi ni mfugaji wa kuku nimeongeza mifugo na kunisaidia kuimarisha kibanda changu kidogo kwa kweli hali ya kiuchumi kwa hapa kwetu Tungamalenga hasa kwa upande wa wanawake hali ilikuwa ni mbaya lakini baada ya kufika mradi huu tumefaidika kwa mfano sisi wanawake kupata hela eh ya mwanamke kama mwanamke ilikuwa ni ngumu mpaka tupande labda majaruba kwenye upande wa kilimo cha mpunga lakini baada ya kufika mradi huu tumefaidika tuna uwezo wa kusomesha watoto na mambo mengine pamoja na mavazi The main attraction of WMAs for both tourists and investors comes from the fact that they can offer a more unique and intimate safari experience and the possibility of interacting with communities. Unlike national parks, tourists in WMAs are allowed out of the car experiences, offering visitors the opportunity to participate in a wide range of activities such as horse riding, mountain biking and walking safaris. Furthermore, communities within WMAs have established their own income generating initiatives designed to profit from the expected rise in visitor numbers. Kabla hiki kitu uchumi wa kina mama ulikuwa ni sio mzuri kwa sababu mama alikuwa hana cha kufanya ili aweze kupata pesa za kujikimu. Lakini baada ya kuanzisha kituo hiki wakina mama wengi wanashona vitu vyao ambavyo wanaviuza katika kituo hiki na kuweza kupata pesa yao na kujikimu katika maisha. Na pia wanakuja wanacheza. Kwa hiyo huo mchezo wanapopata ile hela wanagawana. Kwa hiyo tayari kipato kimeongezeka. However, some WMAs now face a risk of overdevelopment and are considering how to have low impact high dollar tourism investments. In Icona for example, there are currently 14 lodges in the WMA, more than in Ruaha National Park some of which were set up without having followed the correct procedure. One of the biggest challenges is the ensuring that, the, that there is less, um, fewer investors, but quality investment. That has the benefit of impacting on the potential exclusivity that the WMA offers as opposed to a national park. Uh, that's firstly, and then I think another big challenge is that of um, the the assumption of responsibility with regard to the integrity of the area and i think that's something which wmas need to look to address in the future furthermore an increase in visitor numbers has created some additional ecological problems off-road driving has resulted in damage to some areas and could cause changes in animals migratory patterns whilst increased burdens on water supply can result in seasonal shortages The long-term future of WMAs depends upon financial benefits reaching communities and for this to occur there is a need to stress the importance of skilled personnel to properly manage the areas and ensure financial accountability and transparency. WMA zilizoko sasa hivi zile ambazo zinafanya kazi hazina wasomi. Wanachagua watendaji kutoka vijijini na elimu walionayo kidogo ni ya chini. Lakini ninashauri na kuomba sana wasomi wajiunge ili 
waweze kuwezesha mwelekeo mzuri na ziende kwa taratibu za za kielimu nchini I think training becomes a uh, mission critical in terms of the uh, authorities the authorized authorities that run the WMAs uh, need to feel empowered to consult with the local communities that are so often not uh, remembered in the whole process and therefore the funding that they see going into the AA they don't see a direct benefit and they start to question where the funds are going because it's not about how much money you can raise as a WMA it's how well you apply the funds the management of the resources generated from a WMA is so crucial because it provides the incentive for the communities to conserve those areas and therefore it is important that these resources are used in a transparent and a more accountable way so that communities can see the benefit of conservation. WMAs are a good approach but not sufficient in ensuring conservation and improving livelihoods. Appropriate policies, continued capacity building and evidence-based conservation benefits will be important in going forward. Creating a WMA is a complex process that requires a full commitment to different actors, including local communities, government, private sector, donors and NGOs. Establishing a confident working relationship within such a diverse group requires strong leadership, dedication and flexibility. And so the WMAs are a wonderful idea to obtain that kind of local ownership. The challenge is going to be to get a fair distribution of resources that everyone feels they are truly benefiting from what's left. Not only in that there's a fair distribution, but there's sufficient economic incentive that it's really worth something to us in the future as well as today. The establishment phase of wildlife management areas is capital intensive. It uh, requires uh, a lot of funding. That's why donor support is very critical and necessary at that stage. But once the WMA is up and running, it is expected to be functioning as a business entity following business principles and being able to generate its own profits and revenues. For the WMAs to be successful, the communities themselves are going to have to see and realize the benefits of participating in this community-owned conservation program. If those benefits aren't seen, the program won't work. But we're already seeing some of the benefits in some areas, but it requires tremendous support from donors, government, both central level and at the district and local level. So the WMA concept, it's based on the community will to initiate it. And once it is initiated, it also requires the full support of the government at all levels. Wildlife is an integral part of Tanzanians in, in their social economics. And uh, it's seen as resources which has always been there, but take for granted it will always continue to be there. And uh, realizing that in most parts of the world, the same wildlife which is all over the place is being uh, diminished by access, uh, excessive use. Uh, the Tanzanian government realized it has to take the necessary measures to create its resources, which is very unique to other parts of the world, and hence come up with the uh, laws and regulation policies to protect it. <laughs>